apartment's looking to buy a portable power station, this is the model they're gonna get. This one is called the Batpack Pro 5000, and it is truly the toughest power station on Earth, designed from the ground up to handle anything. It starts with a 5100 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery inside, but these ones have an included self-heating function. It's also got massive output. This thing can run surge loads up to 10,000 watts, but up to 5,000 watts continuously. Now you've got to remember this is still inside just a single case. In fact, this is the only small power station I've ever been able to run my old air compressor on. This one is an old Snap-on, about 25 years old. It's got a huge ancient motor that causes a massive startup load. primarily what most people are going to use this device for, running large tools in locations that you can't run any other type of power generator. Any power station on the market might not operate outdoors, but you could certainly use power in even below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What if you want to try to recharge your device when it's below 32 degrees? With this device, you don't even have to think about it. If you're gonna recharge it and the unit is too cold, it will begin a preheating process. And you may be thinking, well, if you had AC power, why do you need to use this at all? And you'd be absolutely correct. That's why this model also accepts two other forms of charging. It can take up to 5,500 watts of solar input, as well as being recharged by something like a car's alternator. This is a heavy duty port that they installed to address the concerns around those MC4 connectors. Now MC4s work great, but you may not want to be unplugging and plugging them in all the time. They also wanted to integrate how you could connect your car's alternator. So this single kind of super cable allows you to do both. Whether you're using solar panels or an alternator, you can easily plug and unplug them without fear that you're gonna damage the port. And here's a feature I have never seen on any power station. This thing has essentially the equivalent of an hour meter. It's got a battery cycle gauge. This will tell you how many times these batteries have been fully charged and discharged. First, I wanted to simulate just using this thing in cold weather conditions, but I picked a tool that can have a huge startup draw and wanted to see if there were any problems at all. And there were no issues at all running that blade, but I left it running for about 10 minutes, and additionally, I connected up a small heater that uses around 1200 watts. One nice improvement on this model is that display. You can finally see how much power is going in and out of the unit. Now currently I'm just using power, I'm not charging it at all. And I ran the battery down to about 14% and then I ended the test for today. Here we are three weeks later. This unit has remained outside without any additional protection. And as you can see, it's gotten rained on and it's totally frozen. Let's just try to turn it on. The battery charge still remains at 14%. Now that isn't really impressive because the unit has been off. Now I connect up a standard extension cord to see what this thing will do when I try to charge it up via AC. I can hear it. I hear some fans. After a few seconds, I rotate through the display and I can see that it's utilizing a small amount of power, but it's certainly not charging where it needs to be. That's because the wattage you see here is in fact running the internal heater. So I'm gonna give it a little while to see if the heaters can do their job. 41 degrees. It's been about 45 minutes, and when we check the unit, we can see that the temperature inside has gone up dramatically, so those battery heaters are definitely working. I can now see that it's charging at about 1.14 kilowatts. I'm just gonna let these batteries recharge as much as possible, because around 8 a.m. this morning, I have a shed being built my power station is about 43% charged, so I'm gonna see if they'll use this instead of their typical gas generator to run their tools. This case is a custom Nana case that's made in Canada and it is designed to be heavy duty and it has the built-in trolley. Now these wheels are not super rugged, they're not gonna go over sand very well, but at least it's better than nothing. Now these guys didn't want me particularly filming them all day, but I snuck in to see if things were working out fine, and they were. They were running their air compressor, they had a corded chainsaw that they used to make some trim cuts. What was great about this guy is he could customize the shed basically to fit whatever you wanted. I wanted less firewood room, and I wanted a small storage shed in the back. That's where I'm gonna store some gasoline for long-term power outages, these guys were a bit camera shy, so when they left, I wasn't able to film it, but the end result came out great, and his words to me were that he didn't even notice that he wasn't on a regular gas generator, so I'd say it was pretty successful in terms of powering tools without any issues whatsoever. 
And now, of course, there is one thing you can guess is the bad news, and that is the price. These units range anywhere from about $5,000 up to about ten dollars depending how you get them equipped. Now, you're probably thinking, who on earth would buy it? I could just get an EcoFlow that would be half the price. Now, of course, you'd be absolutely correct. I've shown many of those products on the channel, but that's because those products are not designed for extreme environments. You shouldn't even buy one of these if you don't need it. And this is certainly not a device for everyone, but I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel if you want to see more videos coming up.